and we're live. Awesome. Cool. Good morning, everyone. Four minutes late. I'm still kind of playing around with uh, streaming and having everyone kind of like be right back. We'll be streaming soon. Entry. Um, so I was kind of prepping that up for our stream today. Now, what I want to talk about is entry level IT job descriptions, right? And, and how to deal with them. So I've seen a, quite a few videos. Uh, there's a um, a guy on YouTube, I think he does like IT career advice, uh, something like that. And uh, <clears throat> and he went on a rant probably like three months ago. Um, I thought it was the most hilarious thing in the world. But I remember thinking like, man, I had a channel, I, I will talk about this. Because a lot of people I think are taking that anger and frustration and just like expressing it and not really doing much about it. So, and I thought about this last night, but how, how, what's the best way to discuss this topic without being too negative, right? Um, and the best example that I where it was able to come up with is when I decided to go to college. Now, when I decided to go to college, it was a, a thing for me to always fight the system. Like, oh, I'm going to do it their way. I'm going to do it my way. Like, I want to do it this way. Or I don't want to do it that way. Um, it's not for me. I don't want it. You know, type of attitude where I don't need to go to college. I can do it my own way. And I realized how hard it was to do it in your own way and how much, how naive I was, and how much I need to learn in regards to a particular subject or whatever. I thought it was, I thought I was always hot shit about something. I thought I was a like super intelligent. I would figure it out. I ended up always did figuring it out. Um, but for me, I still needed, for me, I needed the the degree to help me to get what I wanted to be. I had a certain idea of what I wanted. Um, not necessarily a job description or anything like that, but I had an idea of what I wanted my career, my life, and just all of that. So college was going to help me out. Now, this I had a manager before. And he would always say, no, I don't need college. No, I don't need college. And, uh, and I remember always thinking like, man, if, if, if you had a degree right now, like your ability to gain other jobs would be just like snap of a finger. Um, and this position right now, I think it's a really small company. Um, and since I've worked there, I work with places, quadruple amount of individuals and equal amount of uh, clients, just double, 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 double. Every time I've like went up in my career and it's like, I humbled myself a little bit and unfortunately he never decided to do it. Um, whether there's reasons or not, it doesn't, that's not the subject to this podcast it's it's a thing where do you want to play the game or don't you right um we're in a we're in a big chess match right um in my opinion life in itself is a big game and it's up to you how you want to play it do you want to play the pity party and say um, everyone who gets a degree or everyone who does this um, basic thing uh, is dumb or is not intelligent or whatever. Nah, he's trash or she's trash. Nah, they're not good. They just went to college and did this and that and it's not a big deal. Now, you could be that person or you could be the individual um, who go to college just because, you know, like a lot of the people who make those big decisions admire that and don't fill it into your resume and it makes it way easier to be competitive on a lot of these indeed applications and all that right no that's the way i looked at it was when i was i remember when i was applying i was actively going to college i was applying to get jobs i'm like dude i know some of this stuff i can do it they didn't care no entry level come any entry level uh hiring manager was willing to look at me uh, and there's reasons for that I'll discuss. But the, so I was like, okay, well, 
And how do I compete, which is one of the criteria, right? And let's look at this one. This one doesn't actually, basic qualifications, doesn't even have a degree. But this is entry level position here in Vegas. Right. Basic qualifications, high school diploma or GD. And then one year experience with the following. It's very easy one to hit because they're not asking you here. They're not asking you for um, like a degree that takes a long time. Uh, it is very entry level. They're asking for one year experience. Now, somebody might look at this in a very negative after watching the IT career video rant. And they will look at this and be like, when well, you experience this entry level, you know. But what they're trying to say is, are you familiar with Windows 10, Windows 7, Office 365? Do you know what an IP is? You know how that communicates? They're not going to ask you extensively the DNS and DHCP questions, right? At least in my opinion, they shouldn't. But you should know what, what they are, what they do. The basic fundamental understanding of what, what they are. When someone says, it's a DNS problem, you understand what it means. Now, how to get around the one year experience for an entry level position, right? And then here's another one, like any help desk is entry level, right? And no matter what, it's like having a very experienced um, um, cashier, right? I mean, it doesn't matter, it's still entry level. You go up from there, there's no uh, path to that. But requirements, this is Tesla though, so it checks it out. So minimum two years experience, IT environment. So this one they're asking you for more experience, IT support technician. With a bunch of uh, like strong technical background, including various hardware, software experiences, answering phone calls, preferred, excellent uh, problem solving. So for me, both of these are the same position in my opinion. And then friendly technical support. And now job description here, uh, requirements. Two, two years experience, customer base, computer waste software support. So I'm working on the installation and configuring uh, software. I started verbal communication. So these are pretty reasonable job descriptions. So I found three indeed. Now, somebody new looking at this would be like, man, it's kind of hard to use experience. I don't have that. I don't have any of the, ignore the two years experience. I'll correlate that to an examples you have. You can give an example towards this task, right? So you think of a, uh, they're, they're literally saying friendly technical support. That isn't a job title. They're trying to say, I need this guy to be nice. Please be nice. You know what I mean? So, when you go into this interview, you sell yourself on being extremely nice. Play the game, right? Two years experience customer support software. You can describe, well, I have two years supporting Windows, this and that, Windows, whatever, whatever. If you want to throw in some some stuff that you've done volunteer work, say, well, um, the church near my whatever, down the block, they have Windows 10 and I help them all the time, right? And if you do do that, if say it. If not, say, honestly, I would say I help my parents all the time and we have about three laptops. Um, we would constantly have like Wi-Fi issues. I troubleshoot that all the time. I think one of the NICs gone bad. Like say something that justifies you troubleshooting in that environment. Likely with somebody's hiring at this low level and you gauge the scenario when you walk in, ask them, you know, uh, am I the only one in this apartment? And if they say yes, your gold. And now it's all about personality and how you sell yourself. That's 100% of it. They're not going to ask you a bunch of technical questions. Is whether or not the person, the person likely is hiring you is the person that uh, is looking for that support system. Can you help me? Because I need help type of thing. Instead of, all right, um, you're part of the department and those are the ones that get real hit with technical questions. I think this one would be a very easy, in my opinion, very easy um, interview to go through if you have um, enough confidence in yourself in a certain technology you're supporting, which is all Windows-based systems, oh, obviously. They don't even describe it. And one of the things, too, that's great. One of the things about uh, strong knowledge of installation and configure, com configure computer software, understanding, communication. So the less detailed a job description is, the more uh, they have no idea what they want you to do. So 
this is good and bad. Well, this is this depends on what you're looking at. So this is good if you're if you're trying to land your first IT job and you um and you're very hungry, you're willing to do anything. This just they'll put you through the ringer here. This job, I think you get a lot of experience in this in this position. Um, and the kind of just like I want you to handle everything for us. See, like we will teach you how to use our awesome three D design software. It is a very, it is like a very technical person helping the the, the company um, with like a bunch of technical issues and they're random. Like, hey, could you just help us out all the time? Right between this time and this time, I just need you to do some side work to keep you busy. And then when there's a problem, you run around and you're the guy, right? So that's what that sounds like. Um, this sounds like a a a very they have a strong SLA. They just want you to knock out tickets because of the two years experience. Now, I will still die for this one. Now, if I was in this uh, a certain level of my career, or like I'm so interested in help desk support and all that, I don't care what anyone says, right? This is where you start. Help desk support. Preferably, I wouldn't go with Tesla. Preferably, I would go with um, like an MSP, right? Anywhere where they have service multiple different clients, where they will make you learn, uh, where you have to learn majority of their networks, so that way you can gain experience uh, by different type of environments, and then uh, you're able to troubleshoot quickly. It's incredible how many times somebody will call me, but like I, nothing's working. I'm like, okay, okay, what type of environment do you have? I don't see you on our system. Oh, it's because I was this person. I, I call every once in a while, whatever. I'm like, okay, great. You know, start building a topology in my head, and then I'm, I'm like, okay, so this is not communicates. I have a whiteboard. Okay, cool. All right, now um, do this, do that. All right, boom. Oh, okay, like 10 minutes later, we're back up. Okay, great. So like, let me log in real quick and check some things out. Da, da, da. Okay, the reason why is because the server did this. And blah, blah, blah. So I like, I piece it all together within 30 minutes and that's a good quality to have. That's a lot of companies want that. That's what this company wants, right? This Tesla company wants you to have a real quick turnaround and you can be touching a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, with like a Tesla, you will do escalations, but an MSP on a low level, like a small MSP, you're the guy you and then somebody else and it's and there's no strong SLA you could be working on something for an hour and then the manager comes in but we've been working for an hour for him oh whoops sorry you know and they saw it in like 10 minutes but um but you have a safeguard so you're able to troubleshoot and work through stuff and gain a bunch of experience um some places like this unfortunately you won't get that but a name test a name in your organization and your resume will be a whole other plus where Tesla Google Dell they'll be hiring some people I just have, I interviewed uh, at a position at Google and the guy who interviewed me, all he had was high companies, enterprise level companies, Dell, like Google and other ones, HP or something like that. So he always worked for like billion dollar companies. For me, I was trying to get into one of those. Um, but I, I think, I, I, as a simple subject, but I, I enjoy the fact that I came from very small MSPs because I have so much projects, I think. Um, and I'm being interviewed for very high level positions at a very young age because of all the, the grit that I put myself through, which is like that grind that uh, allowed me to gain all that knowledge and experience uh, in a short amount of time, right? So, um, so with playing the game, right? Don't be discouraged when you see one, two, three years of experience or something. Sell yourself, right? Um, and a great tool right now, if I was somebody, like I said, based on my advice I gave in the previous video, like I said, learning versus certifications. Do not get certified until you're, uh, until it's, it's a certificate worth getting. Now, I'm going to have somebody on here eventually who is A plus certified. You know, may sound contradicting. Oh, he's A plus certified. You said not to get it. Yeah, but this person got advice from somebody else, and it's only get A plus. And then, and guess what? Right after that, they're saying, "Okay, get the CCNA." Right. So if he would have just read that and put the energy in CCNA, that he was, and then I told him something else. I told him to get a. My advice to him was to get an AWS certification, which is most likely the next thing what I'll be doing after CCMP. 
but we'll see how that kind of plays out. But um, that's what I would do right now. Like if I wasn't on the C- uh, the Cisco Guru track in my mind, right? Uh, I would go with a. Uh, if I was just starting out, I'll go with the cloud, hundred percent cloud. Uh, cloud security. Uh, I almost bought a book of cloud AWS penetration testing. Uh, and also, I'm an impulse buyer when it comes to studying. So, uh, yeah. So, AWS. Uh, I told him to go to AWS now. So that's worth getting again. CNA worth getting. A plus worth reading, learning it, understanding it. Uh, Network plus reading, understanding it. Security plus that's worth the certification. Like I would have told somebody was like, all right, well, what should we do? Like I'll tell everyone get the security plus. All of you guys get the security plus. Understand some stuff there. Then all right, when you're done with the security, well, read C A plus, get the security plus. All right, did you like security? Ah, uh, like it was cool. I got it through it. Okay, great. Now, I guess a buying a book would be a good investment because it's only like thirty to sixty dollars. It's not a big investment, not a big commitment. So it's like I would buy. Look, okay, what do you like to learn? And then try out different free accounts for different things. Like AWS gives you a free one. Azure gives you a free one as well. Uh, things of that nature and kind of get you familiar where where to go from that. Um, now. If I was starting off, I would read the A plus. And then if I was looking for the, the the generic, if I was like, okay, I'll get a big pool of, of basic qualifications for five different posts on the job title that I want. I list all the qualifications, networking, TCIP, DHCP, and I understand some of this language here may seem like, oh, it's super, you have to know it in depth, but no, understand what they are. Like I've asked the question of uh, dynamic name systems, like DNS, I think that's the name of it. Um, I asked, that was one of the questions, like, what does DNS mean? I was like, what? Like, I know what it, I always knew what it did, but I still, to this day, I still always question myself. Um, I think it's domain name system. Let's look it up. I always trip myself up on it. Domain name system. Dynamic host computer protocol. That's what the DHCP means. But DNS, I always get that one wrong. I think it was, uh, I always confuse, like, and it's not ser- it's not system, it's servers. Yeah, that's what I always confuse. I always said system back then, not servers. So I always get that question wrong, right? And I always say, well, I know what it does. It does this. And they didn't care. I think that's the most incredible part. They didn't care that I knew what it did. They just cared whether I knew the name of the acronym. Like, what? <laughs> like, it didn't make any sense to me. And this is why it's very easy to go into a situation where we're being upset, right? Um I don't want to get too upset because that guy, uh, he got upset for the whole world for us. Uh, but, um, yeah, it could be very upsetting. You know, you understand the basic concept of something, which exactly what gets you um, resolving issues. However, when it comes to acronyms and definitions of something exactly to the core, you may slip up because you're entry level, you're new. And even me, like I'm seven years experience, I, I got DNS wrong, right? The name of it. I know what it does, I know how to troubleshoot something. I, I, that's the, one of the questions that I have when I um, have for my entry level technicians when they're troubleshooting something. Okay, I, I give them a scenario, and the answer is it's a DNS problem. But the only way they would understand it was a DNS problem if they knew the core concept of a DNS and what it, what it, what it does, right? So play the game. So what I would do is... Oops. Research this. Get the definition of make flashcard. I saw another one earlier. Uh, uh, 
I just saw it. Oh, research this. Basic experience of Active Directory. What I would do with this. Check this out. Give it a second, it's worth it. I'm logging into for everyone on, on the, on the uh, audio podcast. So I'm searching up udemy.com. Uh, and then put, see, look at that, ends in 14 hours. So Active Directory, but they always say that, so it's longer. Active Directory. What do they want? Always go with the newest, but whatever. What do we do? Go to them, Active Directory 27 to 2010, right? So they're not talking about Windows. Uh, get, get a promotion. Learn Active Directory, get promotion. Boom, look at this, $11, $11, $11, mastering ADRMS servers, bootcamp course, $11, look at this, like I know the MCSA is going away, but this knowledge is good, why, because it teaches you how to do on-prem servers, like, you know what I mean, so, um, Eleven dollars, eleven dollars. All these I would, I would buy this one. Active Directory, Angry Policy. I'll buy this one, um, and then this one because it's short. It, it's short, comprehensive. It'll get you what you, knowledge you need right away. Then same thing with Exchange. Look at this Exchange. So I use this, All right? So and I hate videos. So Exchange. Let's just put exchange and see what pops up. By the way, my, my internet is shit, so um, it was not designed for this. Uh, so like complete 2013 16 practical guide. I know it's the same year, but it was with the year above. So always educate yourself with the latest and greatest. Going down, it's better than going up because going up, you get a bunch of experience with Windows 2000 and uh, Windows Exchange 2007, and then somebody would come up with a, oh, we have a 2016 Exchange server, and you're like, oh, fuck, you know? So it's better to get the above and then go below, because you go, oh, I'm, I'm up to date to the latest and greatest. Oh, we don't have it. I have the lower level. Oh, it's okay. I can figure it out. Oh, okay, great. So it's kind of like that instead of, you know, oh, I got to gotta see what the new stuff is. I've been, you know, so you don't want to do that. So look at that. Like, look at all this stuff. 13, 14 bucks. No subscriptions, none of that. You can literally educate yourself on everything this position offers. And it's Tesla. I guarantee you, if you're hitting all these points and you apply to these, they'll pick you up right away. Right? Excuse me. Um, because of the fact that Tesla is very descriptive of what they're looking for, they're not, and they're kind of looking for you to answer some of the questions, some of these uh, requests, right? We'll fill in the holes for them and kind of looking for you to be the guide. I'll help you out here, I'll help you out there, don't worry about it. So, uh, Nice to have Mac OS background, uh, support and background. This is what you can. How can I really help you here? I, I hate, I wouldn't apply this job. Oh, the entry level, no way. Um, with, the, with the knowledge I have now, obviously, I would apply anything back then. I would just apply, 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 apply everywhere. Uh, but anything with Mac and want me to support a Mac, I would always steer away from it because I always think, I thought about everything as energy, right? Um, for me, my time learning something is valuable. So for me to learn Mac, the, the benefit for me is like, it's like, you know, not, not too, not too much drastic. Now, if I learn Windows Server, it's like, boom. If I learn Linux, any form of Linux, if I have a Ubuntu, Linux desktop and I carry around everywhere and I do that for about two, three months, 
and then I apply for a Linux admin job or a, a sysadmin that uses sometimes Linux, but then there's a pay bump of like 10, 20 grand. Boom. You know, like some of that stuff, like a, a network certificate in Juno, uh, Juniper, um, Cisco, AWS, anything. If I literally put any amount of energy into anything else, it'll quadruple in benefit um, instead of supporting Mac. Like I just, I, I thought about it for a long time to buy my own Mac computer and have that be my personal one and then spend like, get one on eBay, a very cheap one. But then I'm like, like I don't want, I don't want to be the guy. Get my two jobs to go. They had a dedicated guy to Mac stuff, go throw Mac stuff. I don't want to be that guy. Like, as soon as you be that guy on Mac, on the company. So, it's good to, you know, if you apply in here and you want to be the guy here, it's fine. But then your next job, make sure you don't put Mac OS support. Because every time you have somebody with a Mac, they're going to be that, you're going to be that guy. They'll be like, oh, okay, this dude, like Jose, he, he knows how to troubleshoot Max, get get him to do it. Even though you're a network engineer, systems engineer, you're whatever, 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 whatever they're always going to ask you to be that Mac guy. Let's just send them. For me, I was like, no way. Don't want to deal with that stuff for that long um, in my career. I'm still trying to pull away from it actively. Now, no grief on it because I did this for 100%. I would say like 100% for the first two years and then 75 to 50%, start tapering off a little bit to not 50% on the last four years on desktop support. I was sysadmin at the same time helping desktop ends. Network administrator at the same time helping desktop ends. Um, but when I first started, man, I was like, I've described in one of my first videos is that I was underneath the desk swapping out a switch and like help, and then that was to troubleshoot a outlook problem. So, right, whatever. Um, I've been doing this type of support for a while now. Now, some people have probably done this for five, six, seven years, uh, and because maybe they like it, all right. Um, but, but for me, I, I've done it for about solid four to five years desktop support, and I still do it now. Now I have staff underneath me, but I'm still. Uh, more of that senior where they escalate to me. There's not enough buffer there. I'm training them up to be that now. Uh, but but I, I I still do this actively. I'm not 100% away from it, but I'm not knocking it too much. But when you're in IT, this is, is a reality. You have to understand that you'll be doing this for a while. Like, there is no, um, there is no, okay, well, um, I'm only going to do this for a year. Nope. No, no way. Unless you hit a job where it's big enough, right? It, it's a big enough organization that you're literally isolated. And there's no allowed to do that. They, they they may tell you that they are, but with the way you will find that out is you ask them, okay, is there a dedicated um, networking department or systems department or escalation department? If they say no, no, but technically... If you need help, if they need your help, you would help them. They'll ask for your help and all that. And I'm like, oh, okay. So what it sounds like, we're all kind of in the equal playing field. And if they run into a ticket that they need more help on, I could be the escalation, but there's no official thing. Hence, we're all answering the same couple calls and we'll be dealing with desktop support. It happens all the time. It happens. It will happen. You cannot avoid it. IT support is customer support. You are part of an organ ecosystem. Within an ecosystem of, of organizations that rely on you to resolve things and resolve them quickly, especially in MSPs, because you're getting paid by the hour. So they don't want you to lollygag too much uh, because of the whole thing with MSPs. You pay them. You go a low entry entry fee uh, and resolve things with your professionals. Right? You're at a higher level, supposedly. You know, some of them suck. Uh, now... Again, you don't want to be the Mac guy unless you really like Mac and you don't like dealing with it. But for me, I always wanted to get away from the help that support. And I felt like that's always been something of mine for a long, long time. 
eventually get away from it entirely where I have people underneath me, enough people underneath me to do escalations and they're good enough to resolve things, all desktop related items. And then they resolve them in a form of fashion that uh, it may not completely solve the issue, you know, fix the problem, but it fixes the problem. I guess like they realize, oh, it's the computer is rebooting randomly because it's a bad RAM. I swap the RAM, boom, that's a good solution. You know, or um, you investigate, investigate, investigate. You further, after about two hours of investigating, you realize that the, the individual ex- told you that, finally revealed the information that she spilled coffee or he spilled coffee on the computer. So nothing you really do can actually solve it. The actual solution is actually replacing the computer or replacing the majority of one, more than one part. So things are like that. So once we get to that level, I'll be fully comfortable relinquishing some of this stuff, but I still dabble inside of desktop support. There's nothing bad with it. For me, I'm always trying to get away from it. So I always get skills that steer me as far away from help desk support as possible. Um, so... It was funny, I had uh, one of our employees, she had a issue with the OneDrive on a Mac computer, and I was just like, man, I, mean, I was like, all right, where do I go? So it was pretty funny. Um, but play the game. Do what you have to do to get the job. Don't complain that entry level, you're supposed to teach me. You're supposed to, like, no. 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 Like, no one would ever teach you. In my department, I will teach you, but that's rare, 100% rare, because maybe one job has taught me, that's it. I've had five jobs. One job has actually taught me something, like actively educated me and it wasn't a lot i remember they sent me to a class somewhere to learn some of the phone system all work systems and they were like ask them questions you know because i had a lot of questions and we have a lot of tasks to do during the day so it's hard to dedicate time away from the tasks um just to educate you like you're supposed to educate yourself on your own time because we're building you up to be like that's just the way it is it's like a doctor Always describe it like doctor, lawyers, even mechanics. You have to learn your craft in your own time. You just have to. It's part of the trade, unfortunately. It's because, and the reason why I don't directly compare it to mechanics is because healthcare systems always change. Same thing with IT. IT, you learn something one month and then two months later is irrelevant. It's just, oh, we're going to completely change the Cisco tracks. It's like, all right, great. Like, it's just always learning. It's always educating. It's always educating. So you're never really ahead. So same thing with doctors and lawyers. Legislation change all the time. Um, the healthcare systems and bodies, new discoveries, all that stuff. And it's not as often as IT. So you always have to learn. So that's the reason why you don't get a lot of the like teaching, teaching, teaching. If the reality is, in most jobs, and the reason I say this. Because I had a few jobs and only one has taught me something that I've been carrying around that's worth carrying around. And a lot of it isn't technical. A lot of it is how to approach problems, troubleshoot, deal with issues, deal with a angry customer, keep a customer happy, how to handle a project. That's what I learned. Now, they didn't teach me how DNS works. Every time I type something wrong, I yell at it. Like, doing it wrong. Why? Do it like this. Why? I don't just do it like that. I'm like, all right. But some of the other stuff I got guidance on, um, in regards to like dealing problems and issues, like I said, that's what I actually got taught. But as soon as like there was an issue when I got yelled at, I go home and I read a book or I read something. I look at it. I'm like, oh, I get it now. Right? So I educate myself. Always educating myself. Put After we put in that pressure, always educate myself. Now, do not expect an entry level position, having somebody above you to teach you. Um, the position that I'm in, I'm in a position where I'm supposed to teach somebody, but I have very little amount of time to do so. Um, I'm trying to build up that time, but I have a small window. And sometimes when we have 
the dumb ruling must do. I actually huddle them up and give a speech. How like rant? Look, this is how da, 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 da. this is why I'm doing certain things. This is why I'm doing this, this, and that. Here's how I troubleshoot this problem. And I'm hoping that some of that sticks to the wall. But I'm telling them to read certain things so that way they can stay educated on certain tasks. So that way, I don't. When they're home, they can educate themselves when they come back. They're like, oh, okay, I understand that now. I'm like, yeah, great, perfect. Okay, let's run with that. Let's do that. So. Uh, that's that's how you educate as much as you can, but you can't sit there and describe go the steps of DHCP. There's like four steps, right? Like you can't T TCIP. Like that's like a class, right? That's like I've had classes to describe this, like hours of study, like the, the, the packet, how it breaks down, and encapsulation. And it's like a whole thing. It's like a whole thing. Like, do you really expect um, somebody at work to hire you to teach you TCIP? Like, I, I don't know, um, like, what world we're living in on the sense of, like, well, we're going to hire you to teach you. Like, no, that's an intern. And even then, you're going to coffee, right? It's like... It's like you have to take some responsibility at some point. You just have to. And honestly, like none of these jobs where it's just like one, two years ex experience and a high school diploma and then a high school diploma or even an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree, one year experience, that's not, I don't think that's a uh, unreasonable request. I just don't. I, I don't think that asking someone to be educated um, not smart, educated. It's a completely different thing. As somebody who's smart, intelligent, but they're not educated. That's uh, those are two different worlds, right? Um, I'm asked a lot of these people. I ask them to be educated. And for me, I honestly don't care. Um, at a higher level, I do care. Entry level, real basic stuff. Audio problems. Swap out parts, maybe. Troubleshoot things, um, maybe not solve our parts, but we'll see. Like troubleshoot keyboard problems, uh, kind of like doing the labor part of things, moving, dropping off, installing workstations, plugging everything back up, installing software. None of that requires an, uh, a degree. Now, some organizations may ask for the top tier, right? Top tier. I want the best possible applicant. Let's put a degree in there. Let's put one or two years experience in there. And what type of technology you want them to learn? This, boom, slap. All right, what's the most basic uh, computer topics? And then you type that up and you copy paste that, put that in the job description. All right, let's do that. Or well, what do we use? Oh, we want them to support 365. 365, man, if they have you an admin at 365 adding or removing users, it means we can touch exchange. You can do it, all that. This is a cool experience here. But anyways, you you kind of throw it on them. Okay, great. Now let's push it out in the internet. Now I don't have a degree, but I know this and that. And you be able to describe these in pretty good detail, right? Like Wi-Fi. What? It, Wi-Fi. What? Like radio signals in the air? Like I don't. Like, <laughs> like you don't know what you're asking here, right? Um, now, uh, exit. Problem solving skills, I would throw in a description of when I troubleshooted a hard drive. Like, my girlfriend's laptop died and one turn on. So, what did I do? Well, um, I'm, I'm suspecting that it's a battery problem. I should I plug in the battery? It still doesn't work. Um, so, I'm thinking that maybe the battery is just not resolving power at all. So, maybe I'm still going to swap out the battery. And then she said, Oh, well, I need the files in there. So, what I did was I unscrewed the back, moved it, connected it to my laptop, and powered it on an external adapter, moved her files over, put it in the USB and handed it to her. She said she was good. My plan now is to upgrade the battery. If that works, buy an SSD to improve the speed because the problem was always the same. And kind of, those are troubleshooting skills, right? That's, you're actively solving the problem as issues, as requests come in, on, like it's layered on top of it, layered on top of it. Um, so give that job and they'll hire you. I guarantee you they'll hire you. now. Sometimes you may not land it. What I do, honestly, when, when Indeed asks me, are, are you, do you have uh, a degree, right? And if back then, I used to put, yeah, I have a degree, sure. Boom, boom, boom. 
in an interview, I tell the truth. All I wanted to get that face to face. Or the phone, like, oh, no, no, uh, I don't have a degree. Do you have a degree? No, I don't. Um, I'm actively getting one. Or I decided to go do some certificates first. Or something. Sell yourself. Again, sell yourself. If, if, you're, if a place is looking for a degree, you don't have one. Obviously, it's a negative. They already have an idea. So you may not even want to apply there. Right? But it depends on how badly you want the job. Now, do you want jobs that require your degree? Or do you want jobs that kind of take it, take it as you go, like whatever type of thing? It's just what are you what are you looking for? It's like uh it's like when you're dating somebody, you you have certain requirements. So you really want somebody who has certain level of requirements. Um like for me, I'm very laid back on dressing. So dressing up and stuff. I don't want a girlfriend that always tells me you have to dress nice, you have to dress nice, do your hair. Blah, blah, blah. So my girlfriend kind of tells me to do my hair, but I'm like, I don't want to do that shit. I don't. She just complains about it, but it's not like a, you have to, like, we'll spend hours to wait, make sure you get ready and then we show up late. Like, no, fuck that, man. I'll go out with sweats, bro. All right, so calm down. So that's the way I am. Now, do I want somebody who really cares about extremely appearances and how they look all the time and all that? Uh, for me, no. Right. Same thing with uh, jobs. Do you want do you want do you want the environment to be a place where they require they hire and they require people that have degrees? If you don't want to work in a place like that, don't apply to a place like this place doesn't require that. I would apply here if you're that type of individual. Now, if you're working in LA, there's more competition there. So, yes, if this these jobs get filled often, now they keep getting bigger, keep getting filled. What ends up happening is that there's a bigger pool that doesn't have a degree. So, because there's so many people here in Vegas, is less people, and I just saw that. So, especially looking at in the technical field. So if, if you get the pool in LA and you get so many people who are applying in the technology field and don't have degrees yet, those jobs get filled. So what's up happening is like supply and demand. So it's like we get a bunch of applicants. None of these are really good. So let's up a level. How, what's the immediate way to up a level when there's no degree on here? Put a degree. Let's put associate's degree. Apply, apply. Oh, that's the guy's not, still not enough. See if we can do better. Let's put a bachelor's degree up. We still haven't found a guy we loved yet or a girl we loved yet. Boom. But they're like, oh, she's it. Perfect. Now they have a degree and they do it again. It's like, oh, we have another opening. They're like, well, what did we do last time? Well, this is the template. Okay, use that one. They don't know what the details of them. They have no idea what happened, but that degree stuff in there. Boom, they got sent out. And then I'm in an experience where I'm a hiring manager now. So HR has asked us to fill job descriptions. You know how long it takes people to do that? People don't even do it. They use the same one to copy something. I went through that myself because I'm taking, I mean, it's the first time you're doing some of this stuff. So I'm, like, I'm taking a lot of pride in the job description, figuring it out. And at the same time, it's just the way I work. So I wrote every single one of my text job descriptions of what, they, what they're what they filling into. So and not many companies can do that. And a lot of them, unfortunately, are detached from the day to day. So they don't know what actually what they need. So unfortunately, it's all about supply and demand of people that come in. And if the people with no degree isn't the people that they're looking for, or the other people aren't applying in a certain area, they increase, increase, increase until they start finding a pattern that got the result that they needed. Same thing with your resume. You apply, you apply. You're not getting responses after two weeks. Change the resume, refresh it, send it out. When I first started, I had copies on my resume, different copies, just boom, 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 boom. The format was always changing. I used to be told like, oh, this resume is ugly. This doesn't look good. Um, I had different feedback. I'm like, this is too much. Just tell me like, what do you do? And I'm like, fuck, you know, so I got to adjust that. I got to adjust that. So finally got recently, like a year ago or something, year and a half ago, um, I was told like, the last time I, I applied, I was like, oh, I love your resume. I'm like, sweet. That's like, I've never had that before. Like about a year ago, I was told that. 
five years ago, I was like, this is an ugly resume. And it's not because I have more experience. It's because of the format and the wording and the verbiage. All of this stuff matters, right? Um, sell yourself. Sell your personality. Sell the person you are. Um, read what they're looking for. And then if, if you think it's slim, like this is pretty detailed-ish, right? What we offer... Uh, Ask questions. That's another one too. So do, do, do these and responsibilities. Ask questions. What am I doing in Active Director? Active Director. What am I doing in Office 365? Um, uh, modifying and removing permissions. Is this something that I'm doing often, or is it just something that you would like the skill you like me to have? Research on troubleshooting stuff like that. You know, so that we go in and prepare. When you ask her, just ask a bunch of questions, documentation. Like, do you want me to save stuff, store stuff? What do you want me to do with that? Um, do you kind of want me to be the, the holder of that knowledge? Just like ask a bunch of questions. The more questions you have, the more they feel like you're being preparing yourself for the job instead of just acting like it's just like a whatever job. Like more likely for you to be hired, just hire. Just sell yourself, right? Don't look at a um, something that... Um, don't let, don't let any little thing discourage you from applying. Don't, don't blame the HR people. Don't, this is not going to change. Play the game. It's not going to change. You're not going to change the world. Um, you complaining on the internet or you uh, not applying or you just being upset and getting discouraged and staying at your job, at your shitty job. And I say shitty because... You, I'm imagining somebody who just doesn't like their job and they're staying in it because it's just they're comfortable with it. Because technically any job that you have and you're happy, that's a fucking perfect job. Right? Stay at that job. But if you're not happy and you're trying to get into the IT world and you're seeing a lot of these like requirements and all that, keep applying. Here's a quick story real quick and I'll chime off. Just kind of hit the nail in the coffin for uh, this particular subject, right? I applied, I was working at a, a warehouse um, and I worked at Lowe's, okay? And I was unloading and low unloading boxes and all that. And then I think the first year I applied for a manager position. I never managed before, I applied there, get out. Um, I then applied for, uh, and then I just kept applying. Is then I got the, I was getting a degree and all that, and then I applied again, and then uh, nothing. I, I I think I must have applied at least fifteen times for a supervisor position, a lead position, um, and I was only there within like I applied probably six times within the span of six years. Oh, sorry, six years, three years, right? For like a supervisor position. And then I was always, I was there for about five years. So within a five year span, I applied probably 15 to 20 times of, on two things, of like supervisor positions and just like all these senior level positions. I knew I was going to get the job, right? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm 22 and all the people getting like hired and interviewed are like 35, We're like 10 years in the company, six years in the company, I'm like three years in the company, two years in the company. I'm like, dude, you swear, right? But I was like, this means something. I don't know what it means yet. I don't know what value it's gonna bring to me yet, but it means something. Uh, me applying, me putting in this effort, me learning this, it's gonna come into, uh, it's gonna bring some value to me at some point. I don't know what it was. All I knew was that I'm getting practice interviews on very high level people. My managers, their supervisors, their supervisors. I went to a few interviews, actually. I got a few rounds in there. Um, I'm not sure what they were. I don't know if they were kind of just like string me along, like, all right, like, because equal opportunity type of thing. Pretty sure that's what it was. But, um, yeah, I, I never got the position. There was always somebody who's more experienced than me, which they were. Um, but also, I had a bunch of experience how to sell myself. Just apply. Who cares? Just get in the door. Once you start getting into the door, you know you got something. It means your resume is sharp. Keep it there. Once you start getting to the door 
and you're getting rejected, put all the questions that they ask you, write them down and look at them. Is there a way for me to prepare myself better? Right? Always ask those questions. How can I prepare better? And then when you finally land that job, stay there for about six months or applying somewhere else, not in the attention to leave, but to stay sharp, see what's going on out there. Um, it's not always good to string companies along, but in my opinion, uh, you can always be let go right away. You don't want to. You don't want to get into a situation where you pigeonhole yourself. Um, at the same time, you want that experience. Like if your company that you hires you isn't big, like like those where I was in at, what was that? And they have no opportunity to get those practice interviews in because a lot of companies don't do that. Like they're like, yeah, you're not getting interviewed. Um, but so you know that position, which I was grateful for Lowe's that they allow me to give me a shot so that way I can get those reps in, right? Just rep them out, rep them out. But for me, I always, I like to apply to see what's out there, see what's going on, um, see if my skills stay sharp, uh, what uh, what I need to do to improve. Um, I always look at Indeed and see what's uh, what people are hiring, what people aren't hiring based on what uh, is kind of out there and trending, you know, what technology is trending, what's hot, what's hot. Uh, and I'll look at the Indeed or ZipRecruiter. Well, that's yeah, not. You know, well, the companies aren't there yet, right? And the companies aren't there yet. And you're certified. You hold no value, right? You're you're in a position where. So I'm getting a call right now. Um, you're in a position where you uh, are. Oh, that's great, but we don't need that type of thing. So you don't want to be in that position either. So just sell yourself to, to wrap all this up, sell yourself, get those reps in, interview jobs that you feel like they may not even go somewhere. The job that I have right now, I interviewed for it and I didn't think it was going anywhere. I was it was a practice interview. It was like an interview let's see what see what I feel like going in. Let's right? see what happens. And that's what happened. I got hired. <laughs> like I, I took the job. I got an offer and I took the job. Uh, it's been an incredible experience. So you never know what's going to happen. Don't look at the job requirements as a negative. Look at them as a goal. Right? Um, and then always remember, no one's going to teach you anything at work. If they do, it's a blessing. That is a good supervisor. But don't don't come out around often. Like there's not a the the core reason why there's so many turnaround turnover is because a um, majority of these companies, in my opinion, there's a lot of companies out there that have a lot of turnover. The reason is because of the supervisor. So don't gamble on the fact that don't bet on the fact that your supervisor is gonna be great because majority of the time they're average or below. That's majority, in my opinion. It's seldom that you get a good one and you just better hold on to that one because they're like it's like having like the perfect mate, you know, because you can have a great job, great position, but your manager sucks, you're going to quit in about a year. Especially in this economy, like the way, well, now with the coronavirus, but about a year ago, it was like uh, six months ago, I was like, people were just leaving. I remember a company that I used to work for that said the turnover was four years. And I said, that's great with the millennials here. Usually they're about a year, two years. And that's so true. <laughs> Because they they don't want to be caught in a position where I mean it's a whole other subject, but point is don't let basic qualification discourage you. Use Udemy, use Udemy, and buy a book, right? Buy a book like this right here for like fifty bucks. I'm talking, but this is ridiculous. I'm so happy I found this. Um, I'm gonna get my. It's unfortunately some stuff isn't on here. Like in more advanced stuff, it isn't on here. Like the CCMP, there's only a Chris Bryant's on here. It's outdated. Uh, it's not what the new book is. So I'm hoping to one day get my stuff up here. So um, look out for that. I'm gonna be doing some of this stuff uh, eventually. But I'm uh, my plan is to get actually training videos on CCMP. But this stuff right here is like I used to when I got my training when I got into the IT world, I was actually looking up um, software support for uh, applications like uh, Word and all that stuff, right? 
So get like Word and Outlook, troubleshoot Outlook problems and all that on uh, Microsoft applications. And I, I bought them for 30 bucks on a Groupon. And I would just learn that, learn Excel, because that's part of the help desk role. I took on that role with took both of the reins of let's go. And it's help all these uh, people with Excel problems and Outlook problems. Now, same platform, cheaper, with pretty complex issues. Not super high, but very entry level, like exchange practical guide. You know, 216 uh, administration, real life scenarios. Like you can literally for like $100, for 50 bucks, forget that. 50 bucks, you can be pretty sound on Microsoft. And some of the stuff is repeated. So you look at, like, uh, you click into one, and then it, it tells you, uh, let's see if we can do that, actually, no. But it, it breaks down what it covers. So you can cross-reference between the multiple, and then you can buy one or two, and then it covers the same thing. Okay, like, you know, buy something else, and buy something else. Good thing to couple an exchange or any type of Microsoft product. Uh, is to couple that couple that with PowerShell, right? One of my buddies, he actually is a good PowerShell, um, uh, I guess engineer you would call it or something like that. The system engineer is very competent in PowerShell. I would love to have him on, but uh, I, I will couple this with any PowerShell stuff. Uh, so, and and it is good to kind of like get an entry level one and then hop into this to kind of take this but with a grain of salt right you may get into this don't discourage them from buying a ten dollar item when it's like all over your head and then go like all right well this is over a hand and we find something a little bit lower and spend another 10 bucks right there you're in the ball for about 22 dollars it's not a big deal because you find a low level one and a higher level one between your skills and you can just like mesh in there and find that gray area and you're very good um so if you scroll down here it is look Exchange migration methods overview, exchange migration methods details, hybrid configuration, hybrid configuration process and details. This is telling you how to do a project. Boom. Microsoft migration project, uh, whatever, experience. And you can put the like the steps you did on this thing and you put labs, skills, and just like labbed up a migration. I did this and did that. I used 365. I own 365 domain, right? It's things of that nature. Sell yourself to get into this field because that's the best way to do it, 100%. And you'll have that initiative and you'll always keep driving forward. People will be pessimistic on some of the stuff that you're investing into your life and your career. But if this is what you want to do, this is what you love, why not go all in? Why not? What's what's? I mean, I spent about, I think... $200 on my network technician equipment, like tracers, terminations, and just all that. And I didn't do all that at once. I spent 20 bucks here, next paycheck, another 50 bucks here, 30 bucks here, $15 there, and buy my own equipment because all the equipment the company was giving me was failing. I'm sorry. Like, I'll buy all my own stuff, be, get myself reliable equipment. Um, so, all I'm saying is, look at them as an opportunities and goals for job descriptions, don't look at them as a negative. And if you go above and beyond, you'll see yourself skyrocketing your career. Um, so the only way you can make it in this field is if you if you go uh, if you if you're passionate about it, if you can study at home, if you love it. It's, it's don't look at it for the job. Look at it for your career and your personal gain. For the CCMP, no one's telling me to do this. I mean, I was told to study more, but this is my choice. So if they're, even if the company was like, don't know study, but well, okay, I'm going to still study anyways, right? So uh, I'm wrapping this up now, you guys. Really appreciate um, you checking out this video, this live stream, and uh, this video is going to potentially be up on YouTube. So again, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, catch me every day. So in the next episode, I'm going to figure sure. I think I'm going to do the software that I'm using for my CCMP study, so... Really appreciate it. Keep studying. Keep learning, you guys. Uh, I'm out.